Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, today I'm reviewing a gun that I've had for a long time. This is a Marlin Model 60. Bought it for $85 back in the day. Probably cost a little bit more than that now. You know, some people tell me you get what you pay for. I prefer to say you pay for what you get because just because a product costs more doesn't necessarily mean it's better made. Uh, if a company chose to use an inefficient manufacturing process, for example, that's going to increase the production cost, which they're going to pass off to the consumer, while still generating an inferior product. And there's no better illustration of that principle than the difference between the Marlin Model 60 and the Ruger 1022. The primary difference between these two rifles is that the Marlin uses predominantly forged components, whereas the Ruger uses cast and machined components. Now, to keep down the cost and the weight, uh, Ruger used uh, some sort of a non-ferrous alloy. I'm not sure if it's zinc or aluminum, um, but it's definitely not steel that they used in their components. Marlin, on the other hand, you know, stamp forged a lot of its parts from a good grade of steel. Now, the stamp forging is a very efficient process, it's a very precise process, and so you get a lot of components made very cheaply, consequently you get a cheaper rifle. At the same time, you've got good quality steel components with a high degree of precision, and so you get a better quality rifle. And I'm not just saying that because I happen to own the Marlin, and therefore it has to be the best. You know, I've owned both Marlins and Rugers, and I ended up selling off my 1022 because I, it couldn't compete with the Marlin. Another thing I really like about the Marlin is how easy it is to take it apart for cleaning. You just remove two screws, pull out a little pin here, and then all the internal components, except for the bolt itself, uh, come out in one compact unit. You can just take a, a toothbrush and clean this out, or, or better yet, blow the dirt out with an air compressor. Uh, so cleaning this thing is a snap compared to a lot of other firearms. Now while I've got this apart, let me show you the two components that have been known to fail occasionally on the Marlin. One is actually the trigger guard. You know, these trigger guards are uh, made out of some sort of polymer, probably an injection molded plastic, but they have a tendency to crack across the back of the guard where it screws into uh, the stock. So what I've done, if you can see that, is I've taken actually a little piece of sheet metal and just glued it to the top of the guard such that it takes up some of the tensile load on the inside and prevents it from cracking. The other component that can malfunction on the Marlin uh, is the feed throat, this component right here. This was mostly a problem on the older models, uh, you know, the original Marlin Glenfield. Um, Marlin at one point re-engineered this feed throat and made it out of a much harder alloy. Um, you know, this looks like it's probably either hard chrome plated or else a chrome forging. Um, either way, the new ones are fairly robust. I did manage to wear out one of the new ones, you know, after putting several tens of thousands of rounds through the gun. Um, but even then, replacing the feed throat is nothing compared to the cost of replacing the firearm. If you happen to be having jamming problems with a Marlin Model 60, 99% of the time it's probably the feed throat. And there you can see this shiny part is the feed throat. Uh, that's the component that I'm talking about.
So now I've got that put back together, let's do some shooting. One of my favorite things to shoot with the Marlin, or pretty much any 22 rifle for that matter, is empty aluminum soda cans filled with water. Unfortunately, I don't really drink much soda these days, and so I could only round up two cans for this demonstration, and I've had to find alternative targets for much of my practice. Empty shotgun shells are another target that is quite serviceable and provides an excellent challenge. Milk jugs generally respond better to being shot with more powerful calibers, but they can still be fun to shoot with 22. So that's the Marlin Model 60. Again, watch out for cracks in the back of the trigger guard where the screw goes in. Uh, watch for worn feed throats. But overall, excellent value gun. Very reliable, very accurate, a ton of fun to shoot. Uh, this was one of the first guns I ever purchased and to this day it's one of the ones I shoot the most.